Number 28 on your roster, number one in your hearts. Mr. Connor McGlynn back on the Rob Dibble Show on your afternoon drive. We have got the final match of the season against FC Tulsa this Friday. It's a big day out there. It's supposed to have standing room only tickets available as we speak. It is the fan appreciation night. And Connor's so nice, he bought everybody a beer. Uh, basically, we got $2 beers going on as well. It's always great when that happens, plus dollar dog night. Uh, Connor, thanks for coming back, man. Uh, this is a special night for you as well. This is going to be your 100th match as a Hartford Athletic, second to old man Danny Barrera. What does that mean to you, 100 matches with this club? That uh, means everything. You know, the way I came to the club as an as an open trialist and, and kind of the journey since then is, has just been unbelievable. You know, I've had so many great teammates, great coaches, and, you know, to play 100 games for this club is, is definitely an honor. If people don't know that story, you're from Siena College. Uh, you didn't get any offers to play pro right away. You got offered to come to this tryout. Or did you get offered? Did you just see the tryout and just show up? Uh, yeah, so I kind of found out about it. Um, my brother's agent and I kind of just showed up and I kind of took it from there. Did you think a hundred matches would happen uh, after that tryout? Absolutely not. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to have good guys around me and, and help me get adjusted to the, the level of the USL. And then, you know, through a lot of hard work behind the scenes and, and faith from, you know, my family and my teammates, I think that's kind of culminated into to kind of where I am now. Knowing you were coming on, I'm glad you brought up Jack. Jack's your your brother. He's younger, right? He's the younger brother? Yep, he's five years younger. So he plays for the Philadelphia Union. Um, you already mentioned, you know, you shared his agent there to get that tryout. Is there somewhat of a sibling rivalry amongst these clubs, amongst you guys playing soccer? Uh, not really, actually. We've always been competitive growing up, but it's always in support of each other. You know, he's on a he's on a great path right now. He's over at the Union doing great things and and, you know, we're watching each other's games, supporting each other, and, you know, seeing how we can improve each other. So I think we have a, a great balance there. I was, like I said, I was on your Instagram. I was just checking you out today, and I noticed that you had a picture with your grandma, and I think this was around the holiday season. And the other thing I noticed, she is significantly shorter than both you and Jack. I mean, you're 6'4". She has to be 3'4". <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is very, very funny. <laughs> but like, she's all love, man. You tell me your secret is staying young is, is coffee? Yeah, for her it was. I think, you know, everyone's got their own thing. For her, she just you know, has a cup of coffee a day. And, you know, she, she watches her games as well and is, and is supporting us from home, which is amazing. So, yeah, no, she's been, been unbelievable. For you, I always want to know this because I go to all the games, man. I sit in the supporter stands, and I know all the songs. And when I teach people the songs, they look at me like, that's it? That seems really annoying. Do you guys think that we're annoying? Does that come across? Absolutely no- not. Okay, good. Absolutely not. No, I think it, I think the atmosphere that we have in, in, in the stadium is, is unbelievable compared to other USL teams. You know, Considering the season that, that's kind of gone down, I think the support has always been there. And, and that's been, been major for us. How does it affect the match? I was thinking, you know, with the basketball, we're out there in the free throw line trying to make the opposing team mess up. We can't say anything in the world of golf or, you know, they'll get all mad about it. For soccer, I'm guessing like penalty kicks that might get into the head of whoever's approached or, or the goalie, you know, either way. Right. For you, where else does noise matter? I just think when it comes to like, you know, a big play, like whether it's a goal or, or whether it's a big tackle in our favor, I think, you know, with the crowd support behind it, it's almost like playing up a man, you know, having that momentum behind you and then having that crowd support, uh, you know, really adds that, that extra bit of, you know, you know, incentive into, all right, let's continue to do well in the game and, and push the game in our favor. It's going to be Friday 13th this week. You knew that or did you not know that? I did not know that, no. <laughs> you have any superstitions? Does that weird you out at all? No, not at all. Not at all. It's just, a, just another game. It's an important game for sure. It's, it's the last one of the season. Um, but, yeah, no no real big superstitions there. You don't have, like, a, a certain pair of socks, certain pair of underwear you always wear for match day? No, they. Uh, I kind of just do, you know, some similar just routines, you know, just checking out the field before the game and, you know, just kind of listening to the same music kind of every, every game. But, um no, nothing, nothing too crazy. How important is that routine? Like, if someone messes up your routine, does it mess you all up for the match? Uh, no, because 
you know, whatever whatever happens before the game, that that's just its own thing. And then once you cross that white line, you know, you have to be able to put yourself in that mindset where you got to be focused for ninety plus minutes. So, you know, it's two different two different worlds kind of outside the pitch and, and on the pitch. As I said, Friday the thirteenth, seven o'clock kickoff against FC Tulsa. Uh, standing room only, but tickets are still available. You can get resale tickets at SeatGeek if those are going online uh, and fan appreciation night. And it would be really awesome to get number 28 because it's jersey off your back night. Like, are you are you giving that jersey up, dude? This is the 100th anniversary match. Like, that's usually important. You should put that in a frame. I looked. My mom actually texted me. She said someone already bought it or bid on it. Whoa. So I think I think that one's already off the off the table. So, yeah. So your mom didn't get it? No, 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 no. I I always get her one a year, but um, yeah, I guess I guess this one was was bought already. All right, you did say this is important, and you are right, sir. We're coming off a couple draws for the Hartford Athletic. FC yeah. Tulsa is coming off three straight losses. We have been a frustrated fan base, and I'm sure you've been a frustrated uh, team as well with some of the results this year. I mean, you got to win this one just to, to send off this team on a high note going into 2024. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, like I said before, the one thing that's been absolutely constant is the fan support, and and, you know, us in the locker room, we know that, that we have amazing fans and, and they definitely deserve better. And, you know, I think just ending on a really high note with the win against Tulsa, who's, who's still a very good team, even though coming off of three losses, would be major. Talking to Connor McGlynn, you can find him out there wearing jersey number 28. There's two things that they put a little rundown thing together for me to talk to you with, and I haven't followed it at all. But the two things that I like that I saw here that you are known for your tackling and you are known for your long distance goals. And I want to know about like your mindset in both of these things. Let's start with the defense and start with tackling. When do you know like this is a good opportunity to take the risk and go for the ball and try to get a tackle? Um, yeah, so I, I have longer legs, I'd say, than most. Uh, so when I kind of see that there's, you know, the other team, uh, the opponents taking, you know, a little bit of a further touch, that's when I kind of, kind of go in and just try and win the ball as best I can. Because I'm not the quickest guy, so I have to, to think quicker than, than the opponent when it comes to, to, to defensive stuff. So that's kind of when I try and time my tackles. I'd be like you if I was on offense. I would shoot it every chance I got. Now, I'm not saying you do that. I'm just saying these long-distance goals, you got to think about your mates and if anybody's going to get mad at you taking a, a midfield shot. When it comes to the long-distance goals, when do you think that that is a good time to do it? Uh, for me, it's been a little different this year because you know, I've been playing a more defensive role. But, but you know, the coaching staff and my teammates have given me the, the confidence that whenever I'm at the top of the box, just – just have that confidence, especially in my right foot, to, to unleash a shot. So, you know, it's gone in in the past, and, and I've had success with that. So, And it's something I train as well. So, you know, I'm very confident any time outside the box to, to, to let one, to let yeah. one go. I got a feeling it's one of the female supporters that took the Connor McGlynn jersey bid away from your mom. I just got a feeling <laughs> about that. He's a he's a handsome man, ladies. Go out there and see him. Uh, <laughs> is is that a thing in USL? Is there a bunch of groupies, a bunch of hanger-ons in the female no, side? No, I no, I don't think so. I think I think you know a lot of our, our fan base are you know our parents and they and they bring their kids out to the game and and they kind of you know show them kind of what soccer is like at that next level, you know, above the collegiate level. So I think that's a majority of our fan base, you know, people who are truly interested in soccer and, and you know, the kids get to come out and, and you know, have a good time and, and watch us play. I'll tell you what, even the supporter groups, I can tell you this, just standing amongst those crazy individuals, they know their soccer. They definitely For know sure. their soccer. Absolutely. And I think, I think it was the Tampa Rowdies game, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and they were screaming, Mark four, Mark four. Um, your bosses always think I know about a lot about soccer, but I don't. And I learned the Mark thing <laughs> on that night. Yeah. Uh, but I was just, I'm always impressed about the, I call them the BYOD crowd, the Bonanza, the supporter group, BYOD, bring your own drum. But they know what they're talking about when they yell at you guys Absolutely. on the field. No, for sure. I mean, they, they come, they're out at every game watching us play. So, you know, they definitely know the ins and outs of our team as well. So, you know, we train every week, but, you know, they're seeing us play every single weekend. So, so they have a very good understanding of what's going on as well. 
going to be an awesome night, man. Friday the 13th, this Friday, 7 o'clock is kickoff over there at the Dill, Trinity Health Stadium. Uh, jersey off the backs. It's fan appreciation. There's going to be an autograph session, $2 beers, thanks to Connor McGlynn, and then 20% yeah. off all merchandise at the gift shops as well. So it's going to be a big affair. Plus, we're getting a win. We're going to win. Yes, yes. That's that's the main goal. That's the main thing that, that we want to do as a team. We're working hard all week to, to prepare for the game, and you know we want to want to end on a high note. Well, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Good luck on Friday night, and can't wait to get you back on. And hopefully, you have a great. What What are your plans? I don't. I don't want to move ahead or think ahead, but what are your plans for the off season? Uh, probably to you know to continue training and and get ready for next season. Um, and then obviously the MLS playoffs they go a little bit further, so right. just support my brother in that as, as best I can. Well, I can't wait to see you in the green on Friday and hopefully for years to come. I, I hope that this isn't the last match with the Hartford Athletic as you embark on your 100th match, the second most in Hartford Athletic history. Connor McGlynn, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.